Hi, today we are diving into data analysis using Excel. I will guide you through five key steps, preparing and cleaning your data, generating descriptive statistics, performing detailed data analysis, and creating an interactive dashboard. Let's get started. You can download the sample Excel file in the description below. To begin, let's prepare and clean our data. We will use a fictional data set of a retail store sales. Download the Excel file linked below to follow along. So select any cell within the data range and press Ctrl T to convert it to a table. Click OK to confirm. This helps us manage the data more efficiently. Let's now clean up the product name column to remove any leading or trailing spaces. As you can see, the cell contains some unwanted spaces around the text. These extra spaces can cause issues in our analysis, so we need to clean them up. First, let's insert a new column next to product name where we will place the clean data. So right-click on the column header of column B, that is the customer name column, and select insert to add a new column. This will be the temporary column where we will place the cleaned data. Now. Let's use the trim function to remove these spaces. In the first cell of the new column, type this and press enter. This formula will clean up the text for us. Here you can see the original column with spaces and the cleaned column side by side. The trim function has successfully removed all the unwanted spaces. Let's now replace the original column with our cleaned data. Select the entire clean data column by clicking on cell B2 and pressing Ctrl Shift plus down arrow, then press Ctrl C to copy the data. So I will paste value the data under the original product name column to remove formulas. And finally, we can delete this temporary column. So right click on that and select delete. By following these steps, you've successfully cleaned up the product name column by removing any leading or trailing spaces. This ensures that our data is clean and ready for analysis. Let's now convert the customer name column to proper case. First, let's insert a new column next to customer name, where we will place the properly cased data. So right-click on the column header of column C, that is the quantity column, and select insert to add a new column. This will also be a temporary column where the properly cased data will be placed. Now, let's use the proper function to convert the text to proper case. In the first cell of the new column, cell C2, type this and press enter. This formula will convert the text to proper case for us. And here, you can see the original column and the properly cased column side by side. The proper function has successfully capitalized the first letter of each word. Let's now replace the original column with our properly cased data. So I will copy the properly cased data and paste as value under the original customer name column. And we can delete this temporary column by right-clicking on it and selecting delete. Let's now undo missing values in the quantity column. So we will start by inserting a new column next to quantity. This is where we will place the field data. So right-click on the column header of column D and select insert to add a new temporary column. We will use if and is blank functions to identify and fill missing values. In the first cell of the new column, cell D2, I will type in this formula and press enter. This formula will replace any blank cells with zero. So I will copy the entire field data and have it pasted as value in the original column. And then delete the temporary column. Let's now remove any duplicate entries from our data. First, we need to select the entire table. So click on any cell within the table and press Ctrl Hall to select all the data. Next, go to the data tab, find and click on the remove duplicates button. It's sitting right here. This will open the remove duplicates dialog box. Make sure all columns are selected. This means Excel will look at all columns to identify duplicates, then click OK to proceed. So Excel scanned the table for duplicates and removed five duplicate values. So 
the displayed message is telling us how many duplicate values we found are removed and how many unique values remain. By following these steps, you have successfully removed any duplicate entries from your data. This ensures that your data is clean and accurate. Let's now ensure the quantity and price columns are set to the correct data types. Starting with the quantity column, click on the column header to select the entire column. Right click and choose Format Cells. This will open the Format Cells dialog box. Under the Number tab, select Number under Category and ensure the decimal places is set to zero, as quantity should be a whole number. Click OK to apply the changes. Next, let's set the price column to the correct data type. So right-click on the column header and again select Format Cells. Select number from the category list, set decimal places to two and click OK. By following these steps, you have successfully ensured that the quantity and the price columns are set to the correct data types. This ensures accurate calculations and analysis. Let's now identify and undo outliers in the price column. First, let's insert a new column next to the price column. This is where we will place the outlier flags. So right click on the column header of column E and select insert to add a new column. I would name this new column price outliers. In the first cell of the new column, cell E2, I will type in this formula and press enter. This formula will flag prices less than 5 or greater than 50 as outlier and orders as normal. Here you can see the price column and the price outliers column side by side. By following these steps, you have successfully identified and undo outliers in the price column. This ensures that any unusual values are flagged for further review. Now, Let's standardize the date column format. So right click on the column header for date, choose format cells, select custom from the category list and make this my date format. By following these steps, you have standardized the date column format. This ensures that all data are displayed consistently, making data easier to read and analyze. Next, let's generate some descriptive statistics to understand her data better. We will start by calculating some basic descriptive statistics for her data using traditional methods. For instance, to find average quantity, I will type this here. And press enter. While calculating basic descriptive statistics manually is helpful for understanding how these functions work, Excel also offers a built-in tool that can perform these calculations more efficiently. Let's now use Excel's descriptive statistics tool to generate detailed statistics for her data. To enable the data analysis tool pack, go to File, then Options, and select Add Hints. In the Manage box, have Excel hadn't selected and click Go. Check the box for Analysis Tool Pack and click OK. Now go to the Data tab and click on Data Analysis. In the Data Analysis dialog box, select Descriptive Statistics and click OK. And then in the Descriptive Statistics dialog box, select the Input range for quantity. Ensure the labels in the first row box is checked if your input range includes headers. Check the summary statistics box to include all the summary statistics in the output and choose an output range such as I1. Then click OK to generate the statistics. Excel will display the descriptive statistics for quantity column in the specified output range. Next, let's repeat the process for the price column. In the Descriptive Statistics dialog box, I will select the input range for price and choose an output range such as L1. Click OK to generate the statistics. And now we have the Descriptive Statistics for both the Quantity column and the Price column. We have the Mean, the Standard Error, the Median, Mode, Standard Deviation, ETC. Now. Let's dive into detailed data analysis to extract actionable insights. Let's start by creating a revenue column to calculate the revenue for each transaction. So right click on the column header of column half and select insert to add a new column. I would name this new column revenue. 
To calculate revenue, type this formula in F2 and press enter. Next, let's analyze sales by product category using the pivot table. To insert a pivot table, select the data range, go to the insert tab, then pivot table, choose to have it placed in a new worksheet and click OK. In the pivot table field list, drag product category to the rows area and revenue to the values area to see the total revenue by product category. Now, let's identify our top customers by analyzing the revenue generated by each customer. So I will drag the customer name to the rows area and revenue to the values area to see the total revenue by customer. Finally, let's analyze the sales trend over time by adding a date column to the pivot table. So in the pivot table field list, drag date to the columns area and revenue to the values area to create a sales trend over time. By following these steps, you have successfully performed detailed data analysis to extract actionable insights. This includes calculating total revenue, analyzing sales by product category, identifying top customers, and analyzing sales trends over time. Finally, let's create an interactive dashboard to visualize our findings. We will start by setting up data validation for drop-down menus. So I will create a new sheet named dashboard. Let's create a header for the drop-down menu. So in cell A1, I will type select product. And in cell A2, create a drop-down menu for product name using data validation. To create this drop-down menu, go to the data tab, click data validation, choose list, and select the range containing product names. Next, let's display the price based on the selected product dynamically. So, in cell B1, type price as the header. And in cell B2, I will use this VLOOKUP function to display the price based on the selected product. Now, let's create a dynamic table below the drop-down menu to show dates, revenue, and categories for the selected product and apply conditional formatting to the revenue column. We will start by inserting headers for the dynamic table. So in cell A4, I will type date, in B4, revenue, and then in C4, product category. In cell A5, I will use this filter function to list dates based on the selected product. In cell B5, this filter function will be used to display revenue for each date based on the selected product. And then in C5, this filter function will be used to display the product category for each date based on the selected product. To apply conditional formatting to the revenue column, we are going to select the range for the revenue column and go to the Home tab, click on conditional formatting, choose data bars and select any style you like. Now, let's insert a dynamic chart to display the sales trends over time based on the selected product. So, select the range for your dynamic table and go to the Insert tab in the Excel ribbon. In the Charts group, click on the Line Chart icon and select Line with Markers. Right-click on the chart and select Select Data. Click Add to add new series. For the series name, enter revenue, and for the series value, select the range for the revenue column, and click OK. Click Edit under Horizontal Category Axis Labels, select the range for the date column, and click OK to close all dialog boxes. You can have the chart title changed by double-clicking on here and giving it any suitable name. To make the dashboard look cleaner and more professional, let's remove the grid lines. So go to the Page Layout tab and uncheck the Grid Lines box. I will go ahead to have the dashboard further formatted to make it a bit visually appealing.
By following these steps, you have successfully created an interactive dashboard to visualize your findings. This includes setting up data validation, displaying dynamic prices, creating a dynamic list of dates, revenue and product categories, and inserting a dynamic line chart. And there you have it, a comprehensive guide to data analysis using Excel. From cleaning your data to creating an interactive dashboard. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. If you have any questions or want to learn more about Excel, leave a comment below or check out the links in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.